but you know, one subject that's been a major topic of conversation, not only around the office, but um, in day-to-day life amongst people is how much AI is collecting data from all of us. Um, whether it's knowingly or unknowingly, it almost feels like we are living in a state of surveillance sometimes. And we're learning about different stores like Wegmans grocery stores um, that are using AI to track people and use facial recognition and, and things like that, which has really created a sense of unease among, among certain people. Um, I actually have a data privacy expert joining me right now. This is Harry Moggins, and he's very well-versed on this entire AI world. First of all, thanks for joining me. Absolutely, thank you for having me. But, you know, we talk about AI being used to track people inside stores and, and whatnot. When this is happening, what is the data that's actually uh, being collected? So it's, it's facial recognition, and they're using it to tie to some kind of identity point. So most of the data sources behind these facial recognition and tracking systems, usually keys to either your, your email address, your phone number, your home address, usually coupled with your last name, or some kind of other PII, or personally identifiable information. And then from that, they can append all kinds of other data, like your browsing history, your shopping history, and a lot of other intelligence that they can use to do what they want to do, track you, sell you more stuff, whatever their objective is. And do customers or parents of children have any real um, availability or ability to opt out of AI surveillance? Or is it basically unavoidable once you step in uh, to a public place or send your child even off to school? That's a great question. And the answer is a little bit more complex because Yes, you have the ability to opt out and get yourself removed, but the challenge is most people can't name a single AI facial recognition company. You know, they might have heard of one or two in the news, but there's over a thousand of them. And you don't know which vendor is used by your school or by Walmart or Target or any company that does this kind of thing. So where do you go to opt out? You know, unless you do kind of a blanket, clean your digital footprint up across the whole internet, that's really your, your only option to fight back. Okay, but a lot of us don't really know the answer to this. So maybe you can give us a little insight. I mean, what's the difference between traditional security cameras and then AI powered surveillance when it comes to privacy risks? Sure, so AI is um, a way of taking the traditional camera where it, it films you, it sees what's going on, it records it for playback, and it, it puts a layer on top of it of, of intelligence, right? where it can actually take these faces and say, this is not just a face of a person anonymously walking through a store or walking into a school, but they can use the facial recognition to pinpoint attributes in the face that are unique. And everybody has a unique face. That's how your iPhone unlocks with face, face ID, right? It's, it's, it's almost like a fingerprint. And as technology gets better, it can be more effective at identifying who that human is, who that person is. And once they know who you are, the data broker industry behind it can give them all kinds of intelligence and information about what that person means to the business or to the organization. So who owns this data that's collected by AI systems? And um, I guess how long can companies or schools really legally keep this information that they've collected? So schools are using it. Um, they're deferring a lot of that to the company they hire to do the AI tracking. So there's been a lot of articles recently about um, I know there's an article recently in Forbes about, um, uh, I think it was Beverly Hills High School, that brought in some really advanced AI cameras and a lot of the tracking systems for students, for people coming into the parking lot. That's a vendor. So the school hired a company. The company has their own policies for retention. Most companies don't delete the data. Why, why would they delete the data, right? If they after they have a, um, a, a positive identification on an individual, they're gonna to wanna to keep that and monetize it as long as possible. There's no incentive. So some privacy laws will require them to purge it after a year or after you know so much time goes by. But um, if it's a commercial, a commercial company, like most of them are, they're gonna keep it as long as they can. And then in places like grocery stores, I know you're familiar with the situation that's gone on in mm -hmm. the Wegmans grocery store chains um, across the Northeast, maybe around the country now, this, this grocery store has expanded at this point um, to everywhere. But is this technology in grocery stores and, and stores like Wegmans really about preventing theft, or is it also being used to analyze people's shopping behavior and, and spending habits? 
Oh, it's it's both. So the guise is always, um, you know, theft, um, you know, any kind of safety. There's always a, a positive spin on it. But the reality is, as soon as you walk into a store like that, and this is not confirmed, this is my opinion in the industry, I'm guessing they immediately know the majority of the shoppers who walk in the door. They know from your ID, from your credit cards, from your transaction history in the past, they know who you are, how it ties to their loyalty program. They know what you've bought at Wegmans or other stores in the past and off, off property. They know what you bought online in e-commerce on your, over Christmas, what you bought for the holidays. They, they know um, genders and, and they know um, biographics, demographics, social graphics. They know all this about you. So then there is the whole variable pricing conversation where you walk up to a shelf and you're trying to buy, you know, uh, any, any product that has one of the digital IDs. When you have those, those prices and they can append all this data in real time to the individual person, well, now they can say, hey, this person has a, a high credit score. Let's bump up this product by 10% because we think they'll pay it. And that's when it starts encroaching and being weaponized to the consumer because of the data and the AI tracking. It's an unfair advantage for the company. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy that all of this can be going on right below our noses. And a lot of people really don't know about this. Um, but when you look at children being you know, under this surveillance, are there any protections being uh, put in place to protect them and, and their data? There is. So there's not as many as there should be. There's a law called COPA, which protects any child under the age of 13 from having data collected on them without express parent consent and things that grocery stores don't have or schools don't give. Um, there was a law that was passed through the Senate as COPA 2.0, trying to extend this range from 13 to 16, but it did not. It, it got shot down, unfortunately, and never became federal legislation. So they're trying, but they haven't succeeded in protecting uh, and minors. Now, California has CPRA and CCPA that protect up to 17 year olds. So they try, certain states are trying to step up and do the right thing. But re, right now we don't have any good federal legislation past the age of 13. Yeah, and, and just looking at federal legislation as a whole um, or state laws even, I mean, are we kind of getting to the point where do the safety benefits of AI outweigh the potential privacy risks right now? I mean. Where are we at in this kind of unregulated space? Oh, I, I think the safety risks massively outweigh the commercial uh, benefit. The problem is until there's federal legislation to regulate AI, companies are going to do whatever companies um, find more profitable. So if there's a way to deploy technology where they can get an extra 10 or 20 percent from people shopping, you know, we're in a capitalistic society, which is amazing, but it incentivizes companies to pursue technologies that are a little exploited, exploitative, exploiting people. No, I, <laughs> so um, yeah. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's going to be around, unfortunately, for a while. And until lawmakers wake up, it's going to, the earnest is going to be on the individual consumer to try to fight back, try to take control, raise awareness, understand what's happening and how it's happening. And you know, uh, and, and voice their concerns to the companies or to their lawmakers. And lastly, before I let you go, I mean, we're living in this age where a lot of people around the country are, you know, maybe have questionable immigration status or some, or maybe um, other things that they don't want to be identified and, or sur like, you know, under a state of surveillance. Um, do you think that in certain cases, this information and facial recognition data being collected by stores and, and businesses and other public places, um, you know, could be sold to the government? I, I think the government already has it. <laughs> I think that uh, it, it's a terrifying prospect, the world that we live in, where um, you go to a, a rally for whatever you believe, it doesn't matter what side you're on, any kind of assembly in public, they're gonna have cameras. They're gonna be able to run those cameras through facial, re facial recognition. And that attendee list can be weaponized by the opposing opinions. And suddenly you get into a situation where, you know, if you have your, your ID stolen, you can get a new social. If you have your credit card stolen, you get a new credit card. You can't get a new face. And once AI becomes even better than it is already, which is terrifying today, and data brokers buy and sell more of these face prints that cannot be changed and can't be rotated to a new one, you can't put that genie back in the bottle. And unfortunately, the earnest is going to shift from the AI companies to the data companies because AI only goes as far as it can be 
linked between that individual person to the information about that person that can be meaningful to a buyer or a hacker or a bad guy. Wow. Well, crazy times we are living. And again, this situation with the surveillance and facial recognition data at Wegmans, one of the things that really brought this to the forefront of the public's attention in the past couple of weeks. I know it's caught a lot of people by surprise, but Harry, thank you so much for coming on and giving your um, expertise on this data privacy situation, because it is very fascinating. And I think a lot of people don't really maybe quite understand just the gist of how much information about them is being collected in their day-to-day lives. So thanks so much for coming on. It's terrifying. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.